Hey you folks, Quillington here, and welcome to Let's Play Sundog The Frozen Legacy. This is one of my favorite games of all time, and an incredibly important to me, a game to me when I was a kid. And the reason I'm playing it is because Logan, who donated $1,000 or more to the amazing Extra Life charity while I was doing the gaming marathon, was able to request that I let's play any game at all, and he requested, in fact, that I play an old game that it meant a lot to me as a kid. And there's really nothing, nothing that can compare to Sundog here. I'm still looking for something that will exactly fill this hole in my heart, and there really isn't anything quite yet. Um, there is a, resurre a Sundog Resurrection prog Program, or project, I should say, that's been going on for, I don't know, a little over 10 years now on the interwebs. Uh, their last post on the website was in 2016, talking about maybe going into a beta or something, but that was about it. Hopefully, at some point, there'll be a proper remake of this game. I still have my fingers crossed, but um, until then... I will be forced to play it on an Atari ST emulator. Originally, this game did come out for the um, for the Apple II, uh, but I always played it on my friend's Atari ST. This was a proper full computer. Don't let the Atari name fool you. This was a computer with like a, a mouse-driven graphic interface, um, and this I think was like an 85, 86, something like that. It's crazy. I was about six or seven years old when I first encountered this game and just simply fell in love with it. was blown away. I actually did a video on this on my channel about five or six years ago uh, and always promised to come back to it. So this is the perfect opportunity. So thank you very much, Logan, for both your support of an awesome charity as well as getting me to play some more Sundog. Let's go ahead and get this going on. The green text that you see at the top of the screen is part of the Steam S-T-E-E. M emulator. It shows you when the disk drive is being accessed. You can turn it all off, but I decided to leave that on so that we know why the game is running slowly sometimes. It's because it's reading very slowly from the disk drive in, you know, the real time that the emulator would sort of, or the real version of the game would take. So, you know, there'll be a little bit of patience to load some of these screens sometimes, but we're going to be all right. So let's go ahead and make a new game. We're going to name our character Quill. Actually, you know what? Let's name him Logan. Because Logan is the person who donated for this. I apologize, Logan, if uh, you actually have a username that you would prefer preferred for this. I'm just going based on the email response over here. So we're going to call our character Logan. Uh, yes, we're going to do that. Initialize a new game. And if you listen very closely, you'll actually hear sound effects when it's reading the, uh, the disc. I've got that turned fairly down low because it can be quite loud otherwise, but it's a lovely little emulator over here. Pain in the butt to set up. Um, and I'm not guaranteeing that we're not going to get any sort of crashes or bugs or anything like that, which might interfere with the, uh, the Let's Play. Not necessarily going to be a full Let's Play. We're going to do at least three episodes and we'll see how it goes. Um... So, we get to uh, allocate some stats over here. I don't know what strength, intelligence, and dexterity are used for in the game. Maybe the manual would help. I didn't know what it would, did anything at the, uh, you know, when I played it way back when. You know, it felt good to raise your IQ, but no idea what it actually did in the game. I do know that luck, I believe, decreases your chance of being sort of mugged or attacked by pirates. And that's pretty handy. We're going to raise it up. The higher up you go, the more points it costs to raise. Uh, Charisma lets you talk your way out of a lot of problems as well. So, again, I'll raise it. Um, I don't know, let's call it 65, something like that. And then, um, let me get my, say, dex up to, I don't know. Whoa, stop clicking. I didn't want to go that high. Ugh. Some of the timings on the mouse clicks, I think, because of the emulator, uh, and some of the timings are going to be a little fuzzy here, but I don't think that's going to be a problem in the game. And I'll just dump the rest into int. No idea what it does. Let's, let's see. Can I actually raise up another one? No, two points isn't enough to raise anything else. Well, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and get started with these stats. I'm going to go ahead and hit done. We will keep this game. It's going to access the disk drive. God, that is so awesome. I love it so much. All right, and we're ready to start. We're going to start on the planet John, on the, in the system John, in the city of Drehu, the capital city. 422 credits in our pocket. Although we'll presumably have some more around. I like that luck is actually question mark, question mark. I wonder if like you consume your luck by doing things. I have no idea how this works um, at all. So when I played this game uh, as a kid, because I didn't have a copy of the manual. I mean, maybe my friend had one somewhere in his desk, but we didn't know. We didn't know what we were doing. We were really young. Again, like six or seven years old. No real clue. But the backstory is um, you've just inherited this ship from your uncle, I think, who just died. And you've got some sort of loosey-goosey mission that... 
Um, there's some colony, the planet that we're on, the planet John, there's a colony there that is trying to become developed and your initial uh, goal is to find the colony and then you'll need to ship some things over there. But other than that, you've got a lot of flexibility. So you get to move around here. Here's us in our ship over here. We get to wander around. We can check our little... Um, our little cabinets over here we've got some things in our stores we've got some uh rapid heal we've got some burgers uh we've got a stinger gun we've got some shield charges over here we've got another closet here that's full of um shunts these are used to repair some of systems and this is like my favorite part of this game is the fact that we have a variety of systems here and at the start of the game they are more or less busted up this is kind of a random how bad things are Oh, uh, we can actually recover three quarters of our warp drive power um, by moving some things around. That's not too shabby. The sublight engines, we can go and trash that. We've got a shunt in here. You can see it leaves it yellow in here, so it's not quite as strong. Um, ship's gums are all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to maybe find a piece of paper. I've got paper. Do I have a pen? I should have had this prepared. I should just write this in notepad here. Oh, come on. Do I not have a pen in my desk? Wait a second. One second. Okay, I have, I have a writing tool. I have a writing tool. Everything is fine. Uh, I'm going to take notes as to what I need. Now, these things do have names, right? So control node. So I could write that down. Control node. Now, when we were a kid, we didn't really know these names. I mean, I think we had node, and then we called this like dual. Maybe flux is going to be fine. So we need a flux, uh-huh. And then we need a blue diamond, which is actually called a photon bridge. But I'm going to call it diamond. Because I know what to look for. Excellent. So we need one of each of those. Oops. Get back in there. Uh, what else do we need? We need, um, we need another flux. So that's times two. So we need another one of these. And we need a cryofuse. All right, so that's half of our systems. We've got our other ship systems over here. We're going to get out of ship in just a second and see where we are. Um, but the, this window-driven interface was mind-boggling at a time. Never seen anything like this. Looks like we need two more fluxes. So that's actually a total of four. And we need a second cryofuse. Okay. Just to bring the force shields up to full. Uh, pilotage, we need a Christmas tree, which is a J-jump. J junk, um, and we need, what is this green thing? A scanner. Okay, because we're gonna try to fix up our ship and bring it up to full capacity before we do anything else. Tactical display is fine, okay. So we figured all that out. Now, I could go and get more of our systems partially working by shunting some of those components. I don't think you can shunt a control node, um, but I think you can shunt everything else. But uh, we'll leave those in there as spare parts in case we need to repair after a fight in space. Um, back here, we've got one more closet we can check. Uh, this would list our actual cargo that's in the back, as well as a little bit of extra storage, not that we have any. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to land, I'm going to go and plop down in this seat over here. And what this will do is let us drive the vehicle that is docked in the back of our ship. Got to wait for the disk drive to finish loading the planet, but there you go. So I can drive this vehicle. I can step out of the spaceship and walk around, but the vehicle's uh, going to be faster. More, it's it basically in-game, It just time passes less quickly when you're in your vehicle, so you don't eat as much food. We've got ourselves our service station over here, which is where we're docked, and we are going to repair our ship. We need two hours of repair, so we're going to go ahead and repair all of that damage. And we're going to refuel the ship. You can see we have a lot more money here. That's because the uh, the depot over here, the depot, um, accesses our bank account. We're going to fill up all of our fuel as well. That's great. But now we're going to go shopping for some spare parts. We're going to have to drive around here a little bit. And in my uh, first Let's Try from like five years ago, uh, this scrolling effect was sort of wonked out. Um, and people pointed out it's probably because I was using a too new version of the OS. So I'm on 1.02 here and it seems to be working okay. Uh, so that's the bank. This is a bar. Uh, these are your uh, places where you buy parts over here. It looks like wrenches. Um, this I think is like a hotel. No, actually, I don't think that's... Uh, that might be a hotel, actually. So we're going to park here. If you park in the street, you'll get a parking ticket. Yeah, the game like thinks of everything. It's like like the original roguelike kind of thing or something. I don't know. Um... So we're going to pop out of our car over here. We're going to do two, two things. First, we're going to go to the bank. If I can 
get in there. It's a little tricky to navigate. We're going to withdraw some cash. Um, I'm going to withdraw 10k. It's a little bit risky. I might get mugged. People like to hang out outside the bank, and especially in the shadows. So we're going to take some money and try to run over to this repair shop. Did we get out of there or did he catch us? Uh-oh. Give us your cash or die. Uh, I will discuss it. I will try to bluff. Probably high strength makes it easier to threaten. We got a fair amount of charisma. Let's bluff. All right, get lost. Whoo! I did not want to have to fight. And I didn't want to get my 10k either. This game is brutal. So here we are inside of a little mechanics shop. I mean, this looks like a car shop. You know, we're going to go up to the counter, ask for parts. Sometimes you have to wait a while before the guy gets to you. What do you need, fella? Well, I need one control node. So we're going to buy that. And just drag it into our inventory over here. You can also ask for information on these parts. So, yeah, tell us. That's a standard micro P control node. You can't shunt it, so pack a few spares. That's not some bad advice, actually. I might go ahead and um, and purchase a second one, even though we only need the one. Maybe I will keep a spare around. That's a good idea. So, I can cross that off my list. Um, I'm going to need a total of four fluxes, so I may as well buy a couple right over here. So, that's one. And we'll buy another one over there. Excellent. That is not inventory spot. This is where I feed myself. Um, you can actually try to eat some of these components, I remember. I think you can try to eat a shunt and it does damage to you. Normally, just feed yourself burgers or uh, use a uh, rapid heal. Um, yeah, I like how this guy gets impatient if you wait too long. Uh, no, no, I'm good. Thank you. He's like, come on, dude. I got shit to do. Uh, we're going to get in the car, but then... I'm just going to go into the car's storage and drop those guys in there. And we're going to go and buy some more parts. I'm going to leave the car again. Get back in here. You can roam around. There's you know, a fair bit in the city. Not that much necessarily. Not that many more relevant buildings. But you can roam around a fair bit. There's a stock exchange, which is actually a really good way to make money. Um, so we need the two more fluxes. So I will buy you. And I'm going to buy you. God, I love this game so much. And the thing is, the user interface, while it's a little, like, wonky, I guess, it still mostly comes up to modern-day standards in a much better way than so many other games. Uh, what? Yes, sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Be patient. I would like a blue diamond. That's a photon bridge. They're nice and cheap as well. Um, and we are going to need two cryos. So I will buy one right now, a cryo fuse over here. Real cheap. There you go. The control nodes are the most expensive. And yeah, you can't shunt them, which is a little bit rough. So we're going to get in the car again, store these parts. Um, did I not buy a second control node? Maybe I... I, I mean, clearly I didn't. I thought I had. <laughs> oh well, it's fine. That was just the spare. So we need a cryo, a junction, and a scanner. So, we're going to buy you. Uh, J-Junk. And a scanner module, which I think is the green thing. Excellent. And yeah, let's buy that extra control node, I suppose, that I thought I had bought, but I apparently had not. Okay. Get back into the vehicle. Excellent. And, um, actually, no, we will keep driving here. Vroom! So we're putting that one meg of RAM to, to, to push. One whole meg of RAM. This computer runs at 8 megahertz. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a goddamn work of art is what it is, uh, this computer. Do, do, do. The game was probably written in assembly. Because most things back then kind of sort of had to be. Um, uh, you can't actually swap here, so those junction or the... Uh, the the shunts are actually kind of annoying. I should have grabbed all the, the shunts out, actually, to make my life maybe a little simpler to get started. Uh, we're going to drop you there. Um, there we go. So I can take out the shunt, because you can't just swap. you got to take the thing out first and then do that. That's the one thing that might be a little nicer. Um, and maybe a few more hotkeys, but that's all right. The mousing's a little bit more wonky on, uh, on the emulator, just because of the screen resolution mismatch. That's the only downside over here. Um, but other than that... Oh, hold on. I should actually put you back in. Then go over to pilotage. Grab you. Put you in there. Grab you. Excellent. 
put the Christmas tree in. Um, I think there's a few more shunts I could just pull out here. Good. Do, 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 do. And we're just going to go and dump you in there. I mean, I guess they, they just look like resistors, which I guess is the, a way you can complete a circuit. Uh, I don't know. It's a little bit crazy. Come on. There we go. Got to put it right on the grid spot. It'd be nice if you could just click sort of anywhere in the window. But again, what am I going to do? Complain about a game that's like older than most of the people who are watching? I mean, this ship looks awesome, doesn't it? They get the little yellow lines with like the sort of the, the, the structure on top. I don't know. I think it's lovely. So you still need a blue diamond, but we're getting close. That should uh, max out our sublight engines. And the ship guns are good. Do a little trip down to the bottom again. Oh, I guess I grabbed the extra control node. That I don't actually need it. That's literally just the spare. Right? Yeah. So I'm going to go and put that um, over in the ship's locker here. I'm going to put it near the top. Excellent. Grab the remaining parts. We need the blue diamond for the warp engine. And I think our ship will be 100% set. Excellent. Yeah, okay. Everything up there. And then two more parts in the bottom. And then we'll have to decide what we're doing next. Now, what we could do is we could go and hit the road um, in the planet and try to find the lost colony. And I'll give you an example of what that would look like. But I think what we're going to do is instead try to make a little bit of cash and develop ourselves instead. So if I wanted to, uh, just, just for safety, I'm going to grab a couple of burgers. Because overland travel um, advances time very quickly. All right, so I can get back into the car. I mean, we can drive around. We can do all sorts of things. Nice little parking lot and everything here. We can take a little bit more of a cruise around the town if we wanted to. I think this one's quite big. These capital cities tend to be fairly large. But, I mean, mostly it's the um, the buildings, you know, duplicate. And there's, you know, not that much extra stuff to do. I think this is a teleportation station, which is quite fun. Although, it, and if you run out of money, things can be quite bad. Um, but if we leave the city, then it's going to go to... There we go. Got to load. Ticky, ticky, ticky. It's going to go to an overland map. Excellent. Then you can drive around, and you can drive to other towns, and what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking for the other colony. Although right now, I'm just going to go and re-enter the capital over here, um, because I don't really want to do this quite yet. So the spaceport should be somewhere in the top left corner. I feel like these things are like mazes that you can wander around in. Like, there's a few different things. Actually, this might be the teleportation. Hang on. Let's see here. Yeah, public teleport. There we go. So you can deposit, like, some money for the teleport and then just warp yourself to another city that's got a teleport station, as far as I know. Bank. This is not where we were before. There's a service station. No, it's not. Never mind. Can I find my spaceship? There we are. Excellent. So we're just going to go and dock. And we're going to leave. Maybe. Um, although we don't have any money, hold on. We might want to transfer some more funds. Um, either pick it up, although again, we're asking to be mugged, or we could transfer. Um, you know, it's a little risky, but I'm going to withdraw all my money. What could possibly go wrong, right? Especially since I'm not wearing a shield. Okay, good. We made it to the vehicle. That was so nerve-wracking as a kid, and it turns out it still is. Also, parking your car can sometimes be a little tricky. But we got it in there. All right, let's take off, and you're going to see the single greatest animation of any game I've ever played, ever. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop off to another system over here. This is your ship's um, piloting screen. You can see a variety of cities over here. We can't directly land on any of these right now, although later... We will actually get the ability to land... Well, we can land on some of these cities. Uh, but we can get a ground scanner, and that'll give us more options to land at other cities. Including, I think I have to discover it first, but I think the other colony. Or maybe if you develop it enough, then it'll be a little spaceport. It's going to be one of those things. Um, so, we can access our space maps over here and take a look. These are sort of randomly generated a little bit. Um, you get different distances. Here's the Lapser system. Oops, I didn't mean to double-click on you. But that's the Lapser system, which has a planet over here. Uh, if we bounce out of this, we've got the Wormed system, or Wormed, 
system, which in fact has the planet Warad. Now, this is a very dangerous high criminal system, um, but you can get lots and lots of really interesting special components for your ships there. So that's a really good priority place to go. Um, over here, we've got the shoot system, the glory system, which is quite good because um, it is a very high security system, and I believe it's got three planets in it, so you can do a lot of trading locally in here. Now, different systems do have different tech levels and different things like that, so different things are worth different amounts. I think what we'll do is we'll start by going to the glory system, actually, and we'll try to do some trading in here. So, we've got that. It's also worth noting is that this one over here, yeah, the Enli system is 14 JSEX away for the jump, um, which I think is too far for your default warp engine. You're going to have to get some... So like warp compressors or something like that to be able to make that jump and you've got to do that to you know sort of finish the main quest plot line not that i ever did that as a kid we mostly ran around and tried to make some money okay so i'm going to pop out of map mode um instead i'm going to set a warp i'm going to say i would like to warp to the glory system so that's going to start the warp engines charging up uh and then i'm going to have to go to sublight mode over here and we're just going to have to try to get out of the um the gravity well over here to actually warp. And what's great about this is while that's happening, I can roam around my ship. My ship is still flying. The warp engines are still warming up. It's still pot. Like what a wonderful little thing. I can check my own stats over here. Um, there we go. Sleep, health, nourishment. Sleeping out in public is bad. Sleeping on your ship is fine. Pretty sure you can do it anywhere. Um, so we're just waiting for the warp engines to become fully charged. It's a fairly big jump. I think it's seven J sec jump. You can see seven is more than fifty percent of my potential here. So obviously, do warp. So obviously, and this is my favorite screen. I mean, the takeoff and landing is pretty good, and I know this is really loud, but it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be worth it. Isn't that awesome? Blew my mind as a kid. Blew my mind. Okay, so we got a variety of planets to go through for, uh, to. Um, I guess we'll start by going to Glory 3 since it's awfully close. That's going to be fine. And when we get there, we'll try to land in the capital city and see about doing some, some trading and swapping. We've got a lot of money on us. We could transfer money to banks, um, to different planets, planets banks. So you can absolutely do that. We're going to go ahead and land over here. Do, 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 do. And yeah, I think without the ground scanner, you can only land in the capital city. But with it, you can land in the others as well, uh, which might have some more trading options. It's possible that some banks in those other cities also have some money sitting there. You know, it's all the stuff that was transferred from our uncle. So we don't know where he stashed all the money everywhere. Love, like, the city panning to view. I mean, come on. Like, the aesthetics. I know. I mean, there's not a lot of, like, pixels to play with here. And one meg of RAM and 16 colors. But damn, they did a good job. All right, let's go ahead and get out of the car. Let's go and find a stock exchange here and try just to do some inter-system trading. I suppose we could have done it over on Jond as well and brought some things over here, but that's going to be okay. I'm going to start actually by topping off our fuel. There we go. Only four units of fuel, so that's not too bad. You can buy... You have two cargo bait... Wait. Oh. Okay, not Glory 3 then. Understood. Um, huh. You have, um... You have two cargo bays. You can... Oh, I think I accidentally got into the driver's seat again. Um, you can fill one or both with auxiliary fuel if you so desire. Because you can just go, like, pirate hunting or something instead. Pirates in space are a bit of a problem. Um, that's glory. I'm just going to click on this planet we're on. Is there a really... Wow. All right. Well, let's lift off and go to another planet here. I didn't realize Glory 3 had nothing on it. Maybe it's too far away from the sun. It's too cold. That's entirely possible. So we'll try to land on a populated planet and go into the stock exchange and see what we can do. Sublight. Let's go to... Let's go to Glory 1. It's the most glorifying of all the glories. Um, we've got a tactical mode as well. Because we might get attacked by pirates. Could totally happen. Uh, we can uh, jettison our cargo. Some people want that. We can communicate over here. You can interact with your shields here. But you can also you can go to guns. You can raise your shield there. And you've got two weapons. Laser cannons. Great sound effect. I think we can all agree. And Well, lasers and cannons. I always preferred lasers. I think they charge faster. I'm not sure. 
and then you have like radar over here to try to track where people are and things. It's a lot of fun. So the guns are going to decharge. Excellent. Wonderful. I like how we, we have to sort of orbit. It doesn't go in a straight line. It does a bit of a circular orbit. Like, I'm not going to say that these are like accurate um, orbital mechanics, but again, I think damn impressive. Sorry that the, the, the mouse does have that flicker though. Um, damn impressive for a game that's over 20 years old at this point. I, I, I don't understand. I really don't understand. Um, the emulator does have a fast forward button, so I could like skip ahead on these things a little bit more, but that's okay. Yeah, you can see the warp meter over here. This it tells you um, something about the uh, um, the what do I want to say? Uh, gravity field basically that you're in. Gravity hole that's preventing you from warping in and out. I don't know what number the the warp has to be for you to actually make the jump. Or be charged or whatever. It's that warping away is often very good to escape pirates, but you can't if you're too close to a uh, gravity field. So there are a few more planets or uh, cities on here. So in any case, it probably means this one's actually inhabited. So yeah, let's see about getting some cargo. And what we'll do is we'll end this video there. We'll do a couple of cargo runs to try to raise money. And then what we'll do is we'll go to Warmed and uh, probably have to deal with pirates. And uh, we can do some space combat and also get some illegal bits. There's a, yeah, there's a little maze you can try to explore if you want. Um, where is the stock exchange? I refuse to believe it's too far, and I think it's one you can drive into. I don't remember the look of it exactly, but I'm pretty sure. Ah, yeah, I think it's these uh, these twos over here. There we go. Stock exchange. So it's telling you some stuff. Um, we might have some goods in the warehouse, including, there we go, cryogenic people. These That's going to be the next part of our main quest. After we find that colony, we have to deliver cryogenic people over there. I'm going to go ahead and not bother with that right now. Instead, we're going to look to buy some goods. Um, and we can buy some things. So what I don't remember is how we know what's cheap and what's expensive. Quality E. I don't think the quality is a sign of things. I think that's just setting sort of a base price. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we don't have anything to sell. Um, maybe I will put in a cut here, and I'm going to go and take a look to see if there's some information online that can give me a hint as to what I should be buying where to make money. I mean, one of the things you could do, and this is what I used to do, is we'd go to these planets and we'd actually take notes. We'd have like big charts that we'd make on paper of the price of all these different goods on different planets so that we could figure out what's expensive somewhere and, and vice and whatever, you know? So we'll put a cut in here because it's gone on long enough. We're going to come back next episode. We're going to do some more stock exchange trading. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.